Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Wine with Jimmy YouTube channel. My name is Jimmy Smith, and thank you for clicking on the video. Um, so welcome to a, a video which will be looking at WSET Level 3. This is Understanding Southern France. And this is part one of two. So this bit is free on YouTube. Part two will be available only on the Wine with Jimmy uh, portal, which you can find with www.winewithjimmy.com. OK, great. So um, let's have a look. We're going to go through climate, grape growing and key grape varieties on this section. If you have any comments, questions or concerns at all, please do comment on the video on YouTube uh, below this video, or you can get in touch via social media. You find that at the bottom of each slide, uh, my personal handle, my two wine schools and my wine bar. Um, or you can get in touch via the winewithjimmy.com website on the contact us tab function. OK, let's rock and roll talking about the um, background about southern France. So. Here you are looking at the wonderful nation of France and southern France is everywhere from the Italian border that's around Nice down towards the Spanish border in terms of our wine regions. It's sitting down just below that yellow area of the Rhone, incorporating Provence and Languedoc Roussillon, so that green area, both where those arrows are pointing. OK, so that's our location. We will actually talk um, more about sort of um, languedoc Roussillon in this section. Provence will be talked about on part two. Um, so we're obviously on the Mediterranean Sea. That is the southern section of France or the southern southern east. So this is a what we classify as a warm Mediterranean climate. Now, that means that the temperatures here are quite warm and we have summer days which regularly are above 30 degrees Celsius. Mediterranean climate meaning that it's got good, um, good consistency. Uh, you will find of course the temperatures generally quite warm here, good sunlight as well and uh, you will find that they're quite, quite warm to hot summers and then quite cool to cold winters in this area. Um, so, yeah, mild winters in play, uh, they are typically, it's quite still quite nice to visit this area as the winters are not too harsh, as you would expect, say, in a continental climate, um, the, uh, they are much more mild. So that's where the similarity lies, say, with the maritime climate. Um, now, down here, you will tend to find that rainfall levels can be quite low. Um, now, there are certain instances where they're a little bit higher, but really, uh, in this area, if you go down to Roussillon, which is the part down next to the Pyrenees on the Spanish border, you will find that the rainfall levels here are some of the lowest in the whole of mainland France, uh, on par with Alsace in the east northeastern part of France. So very low rainfall. In terms of viticulture, this means there can be issues with drought. So there can be overstress of vines, for instance. Certain vines which may struggle are vines like Syrah, sometimes can struggle with drought-like conditions. But you will find lots of international grape varieties down here as well. Varieties like Pinot Noir and white varieties may suffer more. They are the grape varieties that tend to be found in the IGP wines. Uh, so our country-based wines, the IGP day, uh, pay doc, for instance. Um, now, because of the lack of humidity, lack of rainfall in this area, there tends to be quite low disease pressure. So there is less issues with things like um, uh, mildew and rot. So therefore, and also it's very windy. We'll look at that in a second, which also blows away any of the disease issues. So as a general rule of thumb, then you'll find that there is quite a lot of consistency and the potential for higher yields. Uh, there is also less need for things like copper and sulfur based sprays to combat against things like mildew. So therefore, really, as a general rule, it's quite affordable down here for viticulture, quite consistent. And that's why we find a lot of generic and quite uh, inexpensive wine produced in this area, certainly as the IGP wines, for example. Um, now, they can have quite intensive uh, flash rainfalls here, certainly in summer, which can cause extensive flooding like 
um, they had uh, a few years ago, also in 2002, quite extensive as well. Uh, and these are quite common. They're quite uh, frequent during summer. And that causes big issues with flooding. It can completely damage and destroy vineyards as well. So this can be an issue, summer flooding uh, in this region. So um, we're just going to have a look at some of the areas here. So this is actually looking at um, the kind of um, pinky purpley area of Languedoc and then going down towards the key AOCs on the Roussillon border. So this is actually looking at mainly most parts of the southern, but just cutting off Roussillon and we're of course not looking at Provence, which lies towards the east of this area. Key cities here, we have Nîmes up in the top right, Montpellier, Béziers, Narbo or Narbon, Carcassonne, which is a beautiful fortress city, which is gorgeous to go and visit. I have put here that um, there's a mountain range here. This is the Montagne de Noir, the Black Mountain Range, which is at the southern end of the Massif Central, which is that big mountain range which comes down the center of France. Remember, important for areas like the Northern Rhone, for instance, and Beaujolais. So this is really the end of it as it comes down here. There is then a little gap, uh, which is just to the west of Carcassonne, and then south of that, you'll see mountains. These are the foothills of the Pyrenees, which forms the natural geographical border to Spain. So you'll see that this, um, this landscape here for the wine region sits in between the mountain ranges of the Montagne de Noir and the Pyrenees and the Mediterranean Sea. So we basically will have um, sea level and then it gently rises and then it goes into the foothills of the mountains. And you'll see the arrows here have identified some of these foothills for you. So it's um, kind of picking out areas like Fougères, Saint-Chinian, Minervois, um, of which really you only need to know for level three, Minervois. And they are nestling into the foothills of the mountains. The soils are less fertile. They are more uh, con high consumption soils as they're on slopes and they are very well draining here. So this is where you'll actually tend to find some rather complex wines made in this area. Lower yields of potentially higher quality in areas like saint chinian Fougère, and for you guys, Minervois, and specifically a Cru area of Minervois where the arrow is actually pointing, which is called Minervois La Levinière, and that's going right into the foothills of the mountains. So this is a microclimatic area which goes parallel along the foothills of the mountains. But of course, we have other microclimatic areas as well. And around areas near the cities of Montpellier, Narbon and Béziers, you will find that there are some more plains or gentle hills. This means that you have more fertility in the soil. There is less water runoff here, less erosion. And generally, we have a bit more fertility in the soils. These zones are where you'll tend to find more of the higher production levels, making a lot of IGP wines and some AOC wines, uh, like Corbière, for instance, and things like Picpoul du Pinay, and a lot of the sub-districts around the Languedoc AOC zones as well. So this is where we'll tend to find our volume production, our inexpensive but um, rather pleasing style wines in the south part of France. Now, um, the area is affected by quite a lot of wind patterns. In fact, there are probably somewhere around eight different wind patterns, but they are, they are requiring you to, um, to know about two of these. So we have the one that's coming down from the Rhone, which is the Mistral wind, and that is the one, remember, which is pulled down from the Rhone area. And it really picks up speed in the northern Rhone as it then heads to the southern Rhone and comes across most of Provence and down here through Nîmes and Montpellier. So that is our Mistral wind, uh, very sort of a prominent style wind, that one. Um, then we have on the gap that comes through uh, just on this uh, left hand side, so our westerly point, we have the Tramontane wind or the Tramontana, the Tramontane wind. This is what comes through Carcassonne and then it fans out through Corbière and Minervois, for instance, towards the Mediterranean. 
Uh, so both of these winds will chase away disease pressure. Uh, they can also desiccate grapes. That can lead to drying of the grapes as well. But one thing you do need to be well aware of is, of course, they can be damaging as well. There are negative effects as well as positive effects. So the positives are things like um, they will chase away disease pressure. They can dry the grapes if that is what you're after. Um, a negative is, of course, they can cause substantial damage. They can cause issues with flowering, so shedding the blossom at late spring, early summer. That reduces yields. Or you can have, of course, damage of the vineyard. So you could find that um, uh, younger vines could be broken um, then, and canes could be snapped in these rather um, intensive wind patterns that can often be 60, 70 kilometers an hour. So that is a negative that you can find with these winds. You may find that viticulture here is adapting to that. You will find that often viticulturalists and grape growers will um, train their vines lower and heavily stake them and support them and maybe plant natural windbreaks, things like hedgerows and forests and woodlands to protect their vineyards against these wind patterns. Key grape varieties that we find in the region. Now, of course, it's very sunny. It's very, very warm. So we have an extensive amount of black grape varieties. The whole of the landscape of southern France is really um, a very um, opportunistic area. Lots of opportunity to produce everything that really France has as grape varieties. Um, if you look at the name Languedoc, it means the language of Oc, and Oc comes from Ocatan, which is the local dialect here. And Ocatan, Oc means yes, so this is the language of yes. It's a very positive landscape due to the fact of the, the opportunities that you can have down here. That stems all the way back, by the way, to the chivalrous days of troubadours who would travel the landscape around here. Um, but that is a story for another day. Grenache is our major grape variety, as you will see here. It's a grape variety that we've talked about on previous sections if you have followed, for example, the, the Southern Rhone section. Grenache is a very late ripening grape variety, and it does very well here due to its warm summers. Um, you will find that it has very high tolerance to drought conditions, so therefore is very well suited to this area. Um, you have lovely sweet thin skinned grapes, so color is often quite pale, but very high in sugar. And you'll find that you'll get these characters, strawberries, cherries, and raspberries in very concentrated spicy um, formats. You'll often find white pepper, cloves, and cinnamon as well. In excessively hot years, and indeed if the vines have been um, picked later, you will find jamminess is quite common within the Grenache-based wines as well. Secondary grape variety, Syrah. Of course, uh, very important where you find Grenache, you will often find Syrah and vice versa. Syrah is also small but thick skinned, so more skin than our Grenache and with lots of pigmentation, lots of color behind it. Um, it struggles here in the hottest of sites, so you'll tend to find it in the coolest areas, maybe some with altitude and maybe with some lesser aspects, so not necessarily south facing. So the foothills may of the Montagne de Noir may be important and places like Minevois la Levinière. Um, it blends in color, it blends in tannin, and of course, the kind of fruits that you expect on this slide, blackberry, black cherry, but you'll find spice again, black pepper and licorice is quite common with, with Syrah. Other great varieties that we find, we have the variety Carignan, and Carignan is a major variety. After phylloxera happened uh, in the late 19th century, early 20th century, um, many of the grape varieties down here were um, phased out. In fact, they, some of them became extinct as they did not graft successfully onto American rootstocks. Carignan was one of the grapes that filled the hole um, or the kind of lack of production down here. A very capable grape variety. It is actually naturally very high in pigmentation, color, tannin, and also acidity. So it has potential for making rather complex and powerful wines if made from low yielding old vine fruit. But 
Unfortunately, Carignan is the variety behind big volume here. And you tend to get less color, less concentration and less structure if they yield a lot from it. And they can yield very sizable amounts from Carignan, often three to four times the national average from a vineyard. Um, you'll even find as well some semi-carbonic maceration producing even lighter and fruitier style Carignan wines. Uh, next up is the variety Sanso. Sanso is um, normally a blending variety used for blending in fresher red fruit characters in, in red wines, but also a good grape variety behind rosé production, pink production as well. Then, of course, we have Mourvedre, not as important in this area as in southern Rhone, but still important. It was a major grape variety down here pre-Phylloxera. But when Phylloxera crack came along, Mourvedre was very difficult to graft onto the available American rootstocks of that time. So therefore, it got phased out because it was a challenging variety. But today there is more being grown and more interest in it, certainly in areas around Provence, in areas like Bandol, for instance, where that's really a hot spot of it. Um, it's deeply colored, it's high in tannin, and it ripens really only in the warmest sites like the south facing coastal parts of Bandol and Cassis on the coast of Provence. Um, but it will, in blends, add complexity, um, color, and, of course, richness. So it's very useful for that fact. And uh, you will get black fruited notes. Um, and also, with a bit of age behind Mourvedre dominant styles, you'll find meaty, gamey characteristics will be developed. And then we have some IGP dominant black grape varieties. There are many, many varieties allowed for IGP, but you will find Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, because if you go to the west of this region, where you find the gap between the Montagne de Noir and the Pyrenees foothills, and you find the fortified med medieval fortress of, um, of Carcassonne, you'll find that that's linking towards the southwest of France, where, of course, Cabernet and Merlot can be found linked to Bordeaux. So there's an influence through this gap, and you'll find a lot of the AOCs around Carcassonne Grow Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, but most is used for IGP wine. So for country based wine, uh, IGP doc, and all of the departments within that as well. Uh, so that is quite, uh, quite common. Our white grape varieties are actually dominated by the internationals. So we find um, Chardonnay, which is grown in a number of places, quite famous in an AOC called Limou. M -M -L -I -M -O -U -X, L-I-M-O-U-X, Limu, but it's also found in other areas as well. And because it's warm and generally Mediterranean down here, Chardonnay will be at the riper end of its fruit spectrum. So think of things like pineapple, melon and peach, and then often backed up with some oak as well. So they're quite creamy, rounded wines with Chardonnay. Sauvignon is also quite passionately uh, pursued in this area. Um, it does tend to be quite warm for Sauvignon Blanc, so we don't tend to find the most freshest examples, uh, but you'll find early picking in clay for Sauvignon uh, and uh, reductive winemaking to make um, as fresh as they can styles, but they are not a patch, of course, on Bordeaux or Loire Valley Sauvignon Blancs. Um, they do tend to have a riper fruit character, but less herbaceous notes behind the Sauvignon Blancs down here. Um, and then there is a bit of Viognier down here as well, um, a low acidity, full bodied and um, quite high alcohol grape variety grown here actually in some amount. It's still small production because Viognier is a difficult grape to grow for volume, but you will find it does produce its nice aromatics of perfume, floral, peach uh, and things like pear. Uh, as well. So it's quite a lovely style. It doesn't probably have the concentration that you would expect from a northern Rhone Viognier, but you certainly can find some lovely styles and commonly blended, in fact, with Chardonnay, the previous grape variety or two slides ago that we found. Um, we'll also find here a grape variety called Picpoul. And Picpoul 
um, actually is an Okatan word, uh, and it means lip smacker or lip stinger due to its very searingly high acidity levels. And pikpul is uh, grown around Pine, so that is in between Bezier and Montpell Montpellier on the coast. And it's full of lots of high acid fruits, lemon, apple, with maybe some minerality and some grassy notes behind it. Um, it's very fresh. It's very, um, very simple with its character, but very, uh, very refreshing. Certainly great with oysters in its locality and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. We also find other varieties like Grenache Blanc and Muscat, Morzac, uh, we find Macabeo, Vermentino called Roll, and also Claret uh, grown down here. But you will not need to remember those for the level three examination. Um, so that brings us to the end of the theory for this first video. Um, just a few things on some questions, so we can tie in some theoretical questions, what we call short written answer questions, so you can get some understanding, potentially, of how questions could be asked. So here it says, uh, why is southern France ideal area for growing grapes? So we need to talk really about the climate here. So let's have a look at that. So the region has a consistent warm Mediterranean climate with summer temperatures often above 30 degrees, mild winters, low rainfall, especially during the growing season. All of that adds to the consistency, consistency which you identified here in immediately. So we said that in the first instance, that it is a consistent climate. Uh, so that means quite ideal for growing grapes, of course. So saying it's consistent, saying it's a warm Mediterranean, that's two marks. Uh, and then a little bit about the summers, the winters and rainfall will get you the remaining two marks there. Name the two main wind patterns that affect the south of France. So this we looked at kind of halfway through the presentation. One comes up from the Rhone, uh, or rather comes down from the Rhone, and the other comes through the gap near Carcassonne. Uh, so let's talk about what they are. The Tramontane, which is the one that comes through Carcassonne towards the Mediterranean, kind of a south uh, uh, southeasterly direction. And then a south direction, we have the Mistral, which comes down from the Rhone, of course. There are two for two marks. State and describe both a negative and a positive effect of these wind patterns on the vineyard. So a positive, first of all, two, four marks available, so two marks per each of these. So stating the positive and then describing it a bit. The winds can aerate the vineyard, so that's a positive effect, reducing the risk of disease pressure, such as mildew and rot. That gets you your two marks. Very good, of course, for consistency again. Negative, the winds can be powerful and can cause extensive damage to vineyards. That's directly taken out the start of the book in Viticulture about what wind patterns can do, and also the Rhone section. Uh, you can um, follow this up if you want with saying something along the lines of um, it can damage younger vines, it can snap canes, and this reduces yield if you wish. Um, so that completes this section for southern France. Uh, this last slide here is just mentioning that we'll talk about the main AOCs of southern France, uh, and that's part two. Uh, that will be only for members available on the Wine with Jimmy portal, which you can sign up by visiting the website. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. If you have any comments, questions or concerns, please do get in touch and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. But until then... If you do manage to get to London to come and see me, come and see me at the school or the Bime Bar. It'd be great to see you uh, for a class, a glass or a bottle. My name's Jimmy Smith. Cheers. Goodbye. <laughs>